Welcome back to Gamers Without Borders. We are one series down. Vitality have made an impactful start to the competition, but now it's time to focus up on our next match today. Oxygen and Sir. I'm also joined by two new beautiful faces in the virtual studio, Spaceman and Lemon Kiwi. Lemon Kiwi, if Liquipedia is correct, I mean, I respect the guys that work over there. They do fantastic <laughs> work, okay? Hibs has literally joined this roster two days ago, okay? A roster changed this yeah. close to a crew battle format competition no less um that's a tough one for sure i feel like well oxygen are also incorporating a new third but so are really going through it right now i hope that hibs just shows up and drops the mic uh not even needing that much scrim time but oxygen are clearly the favorites uh but this will be a fun match hopefully Spaceman at Gamers Without Borders, we're no, we're no strangers to upset as the format mm. switches up, exposes kinks in the armor of our competitors. But Koi against Complexity this week, right? For example, you know, what's the probability of this happening to Oxygen though, coming into this? Because Sir seem like, seem like they're the underdogs. I mean, yes, yeah, so certainly are. I think the probability is much more, it's actually much more likely than many would expect simply because it just depends on how quickly Rise has gotten acclimated. Uh, excuse me, or EXO has gotten acclimated in place of Rise, of course, Rise over to BDS. Uh, and again, the, the talent-wise, Oxygen are the better team on paper, but I do look over at Sun and think they have something to play here. It's a bit of house money. They lose their coach a couple of days before this. This was a team that was that was formed in January. They, they've been playing since then. And then you make a change and you bring in Hibs. So there's a lot of moving pieces here for Saw. That's usually a negative, but in this kind of instance, in this format, it actually could play out and work in their benefit because, again, they went to Game 5 against Solary to qualify. Solary, not the best team in the world, and certainly those world champions not playing their best anymore, but this is uh, an interesting trap game, I think, for Oxygen. Ooh, well, Oxygen looking like the fan favorites going into this match. But before we dive into this best of five, we had the chance to catch up with Ixo earlier in the week. Let's see what he had to say. My name is Ixo, I play with Archie and Jorias under Auction Esports. Uh, I think our goals and expectations for this tournament is genuinely just to have a good time and make sure we qualify for the event. I think from there, we can probably aim for about a top eight. It obviously depends, because this is a very new team for me, but we can genuinely, with the team dynamics we have, we can win this tournament, it just depends on the day. Uh, I think the structure of the tournament is quite interesting because usually you just have a 3v3 only kind of tournament. So it's quite nice to like use different game modes. I like the fact that you can't just choose one game mode over and over again. So it can't be like 1v1, then 1v1, then 1v1, and just losing that way. I like the way that you have to use, uh, you know, different matchups as well for different type of people. But I definitely know for a fact that other teams will play with different people depending on who we play. It makes it so much harder for Detonator to try and build that momentum. I do have a sneaking suspicion that Luminosity are going to run away with this one, but I have been wrong before, and it's up to Detonator to prove me wrong again. We saw a lot from Burn in the first game, so it's not oh! in the 2v2s, but it's Luminosity that we're seeing everything from. Um, I think our strength as a team is genuinely just relationship. I think because of the fact it's a new team, it's kind of impossible to know the exact strengths and weaknesses of the team, but. Overall, our relationships are pretty strong. I'd say the bad, bad sides to our team is, again, just the lack of uh, time with each other. I'd say the role of Jorias on our team is genuinely just to be an incredible mechanical player that will play 1v1. He'll basically do everything for the team. He's going to play 1v1, he's going to play 2v2, and he's going to be an excellent freeze player. Archie's going to... He's going to add a factor of, like, consistency. He's going to be the quick player. Honestly, still thinking they can end this one in three. They can just put together the right play. That's a nice win in the corner. He's speedily up to the ball, but Chicago in the right spot. Luminosity still crashing in front, and that's a goal for Ixo. Uh The atmosphere between us is extremely good because me and Archie have been friends for years, and Jory is just a nice guy. I mean, they've been teaming for about eight months now, I think it is. And overall, the atmosphere is just really cheerful and overall good vibes. So, I mean, raising money for a good cause is definitely a good motivator for us. It's obviously more than a game, uh, this tournament. It's always good to like have something else that's going on behind behind closed doors that's going to like motivate us and push us forward. Yeah, to our supporters, just keep cheering us on. We're going to try our best to deliver good results, and overall, we're going to try and prove to everyone that Auction Esports isn't just a joke of a team that that is inconsistent. We're going to try our best to become a consistent top team in, e in EU and the rest of the world. 
I do like how Ixo is just honest about the inconsistencies of day in, day out competitive play. He kind of says, you know, depending on the day, we could beat anyone, we have the ability, but you know, it kind of just depends on the day. I feel like that's the response you get from a roster being fairly new, Spaceman. Yeah, and I, I think that honesty is needed because before he joined this team, that was the sentiment for Oxygen for a long time when Rise was picked up, was this team could win it at any point, but the ebb and flows of Rocket League seem to never favor them. And Ixo does bring a pace change that I think is much needed on Oxygen, and I think that pace will help them in this tournament. You heard him talk about it in the interview, they have Jorius for ones and twos. He's probably the best player on the field, and Archie from 10-30 even up close at 20 feet, like wherever he's out on the pitch, he's going to give you a lot in that offensive third offensively. So this is a squad that has everything in the toolkit to close this series out in pretty even fashion. We also have to remember that as a roster, Oxygen, we've got Jurias, we've got Archie and Ixo, they all have Gamers 8 experience. They've got experience in that high stakes competition in the crew battle format. So Lemon, that at least gives them an edge. And you heard it in the interview, Iso said, let's put Jorius for, for ones, for twos, for threes, everything. If there were fours, you'd throw him in too. But Iso sounds like a really excited player. The vibes are good, but how good space, right? Because your mm. rise, your former third is on BDS and they're in the next round if Oxygen make it there. So are the vibes staying good when you're going up against your former teammate? And they, like Iso said, Oxygen want to prove they're a top team in EU. BDS want to do the same. I'm looking forward to the the semi but of course Sa is the first opponent uh, and I'm hoping for an exciting match so uh, you know these underdog teams can catch people off guard they can indeed I want your predictions before we dive into this next best of five spaceman kick us off I got to look at Oxygen, of course, on paper in game. They're the better team. Uh, when Quadrant eventually fractured, we're wondering where Cash is going to go, where Zixo going to go. Zixo was probably one of the best free agent pickups on the market that, that Oxygen could have made, given that Rise moves the transfer over to BDS. I like the pace of this team. I think they're better with Zixo than they might have been with Rise, though Rise is the better player. I think this is a good change, and it's going to show good results here. I got Oxygen winning. Ooh, Lemon, what about yourself? Same thing. I, I want to give the benefit of the doubt because I feel like we didn't give enough love to the underdogs in NA and they really showed up, aka Koi. So I'll give definitely one game to sub, but Oxygen winning all the way. Oxygen winning all the way, apparently. Let's keep this ball rolling. We've set our piece here in the studio. It's now time to head over to our next best of five. Oxygen taking on Sir. Colin Stumpy, take us in. Thank you very much, Banks. Appreciate that. And I see Spaceman and Lemon Kiwi chilling out on the virtual desk as well. I am Stumpy, joined by Cool Call 93 and Oxygen versus Sir. Uh, two relatively new teams, really, at least Cole, with these rosters. Yeah, I mean, we have had some combination of these players that have been playing together forever. Mike Boy and Thor, I think, have been playing together since spring of last season, which in Rocket League terms is about 862 so years. So long. <laughs> it's a very, like, it's almost a year, which is like just does not happen. I think in the interview we saw earlier, Ixo was like, oh yeah, these two players have been playing together for eight months. As, as if that blew his mind. Well, to be fair, that kind of blew my mind. I was like, has been that long already? But like, Archie and Jorius have had really good standings in the RLCS. And yes, they have lost Rise. Yes, that could potentially be our upper bracket semi-final if BDS can beat German Amigos and if Oxygen can beat Sir. However, I, I, I like this combo. I like Igso joining this team. He he brings in more of that 1v1 experience. Yes, you know, obviously Jorius is going to be your main 1v1 player, but he brings in just that little bit more that he can be helping out with. But over on the side of Sir with my boy Tho and Hibbs. My boy and Tho have got they've got a little bit of that 1v1 experience, but I think they are going to be the weaker on that side. So I would imagine in our second matchup, we're going to be seeing 2v2 if Oxygen win it, or 1v1 if Sir win it. Well, let's not jump ahead too quickly because there is, of course, the small matter of the opening 3v3 to build up some momentum and get that all-important pip on the scoreboard. Start off well. And you think about teams that have a point to prove. Oxygen are surely there. Mm -hmm. They were, it seems, nothing more than a stepping stone for Rise, who's now on BDS. It's that, and it's also, we've seen them compete when at the full major, yes, back in December, but at the full major, and with the player who has just scored that first goal for them, they did not live up to that pressure. And pressure, I feel, is going to be an issue for Oxygen, but on this attack, and Archie and a couple of demos in there too, the ball bouncing on top of Mike Boy, leaves the bottom right corner completely open. But Cole, the pressure argument, 
Igzo back on Quadrant. They, I don't want to say choked, but they did not win um, their one chance to then be going through to that tiebreaker match. Oxygen, they got through to top eight, I believe it was, in four, and then they just couldn't make it, despite being one of the favourites to win. Pressure is going to be working against Oxygen, I feel. Yeah, especially when there's all these eyes on you wondering about the pickup that you've made, wondering about how they let Oli go, wondering about how they let Rise go, you know, what's happening with this Oxygen roster? For a sub, they've been going about their business for a long, long time now, you know, we're, we're saying how they brought in Hibs for this event. Fair enough. I mean, you know, to some extent, any good three players can come together and be pretty good in any given tournament. There's no reason that would be too much of a detriment. Where it starts to rear its ugly head is if they do come under pressure, if they do find themselves in a, in a game five and a game seven maybe later on, how do they deal with that? That's what they have to figure out as they go. The actual Rocket League on the pitch, as you can see, as Hibs passes two, though, will be okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and Hibbs now trying to get his way up into the sky. Man, just made contact with no boost. He can't be continuing on this play. Jory is happy about that because he can get a good clear. Misreading Mike Boy on that chance as well. And Hibbs going for that 50. The double commit on defense leaves Archie now with the ball. 60 boost challenging alongside Tho with a corner boost grab going towards the orange team. It's going to mean that Oxygen are going to be put now on the back foot. Oh, Hibbs, he used his teammate as a decoy, gets a second touch himself, and it's 1 1. Fantastic move upfield as well, where Hibbs knows that Oxygen funds a little bit low on boost. A bump from Tho coming in on Jorius. Wasn't making contact anyway, but the perfect placement, bar down. And Cole, I know we disagree on this as well at this point. I like a bar down shot, but you look a nice clean slot it in the top corner. Oh yeah, smash it straight in. Don't take off any of its miles per hour. Just see it grace the net, but you're having your way, Stumpy. Bar down skis all over the shop. The devil bar down, and this man is extremely happy. And Hibbs again scoring it too. Can't help but kiss that crossbar. Wonderfully. Sir, going 2-1 up with two minutes gone. Playing well, sir. Yeah, this is what we expected. You know, Tho and Hibbs, uh, sorry, Tho and Mike Boy brought in Hibbs for a reason. Clearly the scrims were going well, or the sessions they were doing with him, if they were wondering which third to pick up, he was the one they would have selected. I'm sure they would have had options, a team that regularly makes it to the RLCS. And it was Hibs that was chosen. And this is why. My boy's coming forward again. More awkward defending from Oxygen. They seem penned back right now. Mm. They, see, they, they seem like a new team. Mm. Yeah, great movement too from Sir to managing to get the conveyor belt moving around, blocking off any avenue that Oxygen may well be able to escape from Archie onto the ceiling. Double touch coming in. That goes to the backboard, but you saw three players come in there. My boy in the initial oh. challenge. A bump from Archie again. Saved it by Tho. The Sir defense is wonderful. There was one in there, one backboard and one challenging early. The three places that you need to cover. Good covering as well. So comms are clearly quick, but Oxygen have found a way through again, but Hibs from the side. Oxygen have woken up a little bit though after going 2-1 behind it seems like it was almost good for them to just wake them up somewhat as Tho puts that one to the side Hib sends it long Oxygen all the way back again and more little nibbles I think it was Archie I oh, know it was Jorius this time so Oxygen may be thinking the best way to break through Sa is to break through Sa mm. great touch from Archie to send it along Woods with Tho saving it away a couple more passes coming in from Oxygen now changing up how they're approaching their offense a minute 45 and Jory is to this ceiling. Won't be able to get anything from that. With Tho and Hibbs double committee, you know, that is a sign of a new team. And it's Mike Boy having to clear up on defense. Yeah, I take it back. They look like a new team too, does Sir. So two slightly staggered offenses. Who's going to be the one to just grind Save. their way through this CV3 and potentially through this series. So far, it's Sir that are doing that better. Tho's up. He's past Archie. Up against Jory. His house is 50-50 game. Pretty good into the corner. But in the end, the ball just rolls up and Inkso can come home. Oxygen have had some looks, Stumpy, and they've had some mm. pace showing, but nothing really consistent when it comes to pressure. Yeah, they've had those good one-off moments, but they haven't had the shot, shot, shot vibe that they would like until the ground pitch. Oh. Jory is shooting it, and Inkso oh. again, Sir's defense, they are on fire, making sure that all of these shots are going towards safe places too, until finally it pinches Central. Jory has waits to smash it home. Finally, one boost off, one pass, one piece of pressure, and one attack too many. And Sar couldn't deal with it. It was Tho's 50-50 game, which is normally such an asset of his, of, of his. Just didn't quite work for him on that occasion. Bundled into the center, and then put in the back of the net. I think it was by Jorius. Shouldn't have that equalizer, but might lose it straight away of the kickoff. Ixo has to be very wary as he's coming forwards. Archie sends it long. 
helped out to the corner by Jorius. What's Jorius going to do? He's going to go for the ball <laughs> while he so goes for a horrific bump on poor old Mike Boy. It doesn't lead to much. Other way around. annoying for Mike Boy. Oh, was it Mike Boy going for the bump? Yes, yeah, Mike Boy came from underneath and just pulled him back down to the floor. Like, no, 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 no. We are not taking off here, mate. Jorius is already on it. Don't double commit. You look silly. Jorius has the ball now all by himself. No double committing here. Just a neat and tidy flick over the top. And Ixo's waiting, wants to get involved. Such a good mechanical player is Ixo when he gets himself going. One of those players who can be a little bit quieter in series. When he gets going, he's brilliant. And there he is, right. coming to action. Ain't going to miss that one. Oxygen had the lead. Somewhat lucky with this touch towards the middle, but definitely a pass was intended. Archie challenging with Thone. And Ixo is in right place, right time. Hibbs hates that right place, and he hates that right time. Gets sent away from the goal with those Predator missiles raining down. 13 seconds, Oxygen with the lead. That's a couple of times that Tho has been dunked as well, so whether he maybe has just lost his chance to play in the 2v2 or the 1v1 remains to be seen if that style of his game isn't quite working out now. So I do have a couple more seconds to play with. Brave. It's a good read from Hibbs. Can't quite get the second touch. Jorish just wants to kill it. Ixo and Archie want to help him. That is not where you want to be double committing at zero seconds where <gasps> you have a team are desperate for a goal. The ball stays high. Mike Boy, the second touch isn't there. Hibbs, it should be Thos desperate to come in. They all want the ball to, sir. Is Tho going to get it? Yes, he is. Mike Boy waits. Mike oh. Boy can't win the race. And Oxygen so gratefully slap that ball to the floor. I was holding my breath for the last 15 seconds there. Desperate for Oxygen and desperate for Oxygen to save it down. Um, managed to get that 1-0 in the end. And it was a great recovery towards the end of that game two where they were down 2-1 for a good amount of time a couple of rapid goals and they found themselves in the lead so so looking like they were very happy to be pushing hard on oxygen will that be transitioning over towards the twos and the ones i wonder and cole it's time to play the very fun game twos or ones oh i'm going to go with twos because you do not want to face jorias in 1v1 I think that two's a bit more of a leveler than 1v1. 1v1, the favorite will tend to win on a higher percentage mm -hmm. rating than two. There's less upsets. And they'll win on a higher percentage rating than threes. You know, it sort of descends in mm -hmm. that sense. Uh, so certainly 2v2 for me is what I believe uh, Saar will pick. I, I'm, maybe I'm just being harsh because the two challenges that led to goals were against Thoe. Maybe I'm looking too much into it. Oh, you're, 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 you're a sniper with your scope aimed on Thoe right now. You've said that he missed his chance to play in the 2v2 earlier as well. Because oh, well that, that. that was my question. I'm saying that I'm saying that if the players are much of a muchness, which I would say they are, and mm -hmm. Thoe has been just beaten down. He's playing, ignore me. Yeah, Thoe and Mike Boy. <laughs> The lads, they've picked 2v2, they've gone together. Oh, it's like, my 50-50 game, you know, it's 50-50, isn't it? It's luck. <laughs> That's what he said. And he was like, I don't want to argue this. I cannot be bothered. I'm the new which, guy. Which is fair enough. I don't have enough rank to pull right now. The, the problem is they were speaking in Dutch and, and Hibs can't speak Dutch, so. Don't you hate it when people speak in Dutch? <laughs> I think we all do. Well, let's see if Sa are able to get themselves back into this series. Neither team, it goes without saying, want to drop to the lower bracket where it's going to look pretty scary. Monkey's already down there. Fufax Doc down there, who performed valiantly earlier on against Team Vitality. And now we have the 2v2. Maybe an early chance for Tho, but good pace from Arch. Jory is. Can he put that one away? Not quite got the angle first time. Second time around, though, he sinks it. Yeah, on the second like he manages in 40 seconds to be able to receive that pass very well from uh, Archie as well. And that is a very basic aerial. You don't need anything more than that. Tap it in nicely. And it's a good counter-attack too. Something that you're going to be seeing a lot more in 2v2 compared to those threes. You don't have that final man to save your skin. We'll see if Oxygen continues to try and play that counter-attacking style. I imagine they'll want to dictate the speed and pressure a little bit more than that, though. Won't want the ball too much in their half. And that's where it's remaining as though gets a touch on the backboard. Can he just spoon this one towards Mike Boy? The feed isn't quite there. Archie now has Jorius to his left. Jorius and Archie moving forward in formation. And this is where Oxygen will want to keep the ball. They'll be desperate to keep it in the orange half. Yeah, and it's the two players from Oxygen that have been a lot more established together too. Being together for an, uh, a near record-breaking, I'm sure, eight months, um, as wow. Ito was saying. Good oh. challenge low as well from Jorius. Faking going for that three, or that 180 flick. Instead, takes it back down to the ground, fakes out Mike Boy. And I like that a lot. <laughs> That's just cheeky. Yeah, it was, you know in Rumble, the, the magnet that just pulls the ball back? Yes, yeah, yeah. It was a bit like that the way the ball just sort of stopped. It looked like it was going to go one direction. The tap and smash was being set up. And then suddenly, nope, a tap and smash. It's going to roll underneath you. And that is a couple of clean goals for Oxygen Esports.
Torres, who is starting to warm up mechanically. Archie, though, he misses. Should be able to get back in time, but that was a little bit dodgy from Oxygen. Dodgy, then I'm sure he would have liked that one bouncing awkwardly towards the net as well. Jorius can clear it away on that chance. Just to update everybody, I'm on the B stream. BDS have lost that first match, and that goal has been lost as Sir managed to score one versus Oxygen. But yeah, on the B stream, bear in mind, pop a B on the end of this URL. You get to watch German Amigos versus BDS, and they've just lost the one, the 3v3s. German Amigos, who rumor has it, might be being signed by a pretty big org fairly soon. They have just flown to France. I'm not sure if they're playing in France right now or if they all headed home, but yeah, a few uh, interesting rumors are swirling and whirling around the German Amigos camp right now. But more on them later, I'm sure, on the A stream. For now, we'll focus on Oxygen Esports and Sa, because Sa have got one goal back and fighting to get that second. There's more good touches from Jorias. But Sa are getting more involved now. Tho up against Archie. Tho wins that race, and that is why Tho always is going to play the 2v2s. <laughs> the great equaliser is Tho. He loses 50 50 but my word, he scores two goals. Archie pushing him just a smidge too far. Isn't able to get back on that fantastic challenge through from Tho either. Two minutes gone, two goals apiece in our second game. Gosh, that's a lot of twos. It's a, it's a close 2v2 as well, you know, I mean, Saar have had... 2v2? What? Yeah. The oh, there you go, there you go, the, the twos do keep coming. Uh, the Saar have had more chances and more possession. Oxygen have had better chances and more incisive passing, but it's an intriguing place we find in this game right now with the two playstyles pretty much mm. on show. Archie now that right wall sees Jorius central. We'll be going solo instead of my boy can challenge with a hundred boost. Jorius has got a lot of time and space here. Maintains that reset. Isn't going to be using it for a little while. Instead, it falls back down towards that uh, defense. A bump, but not too effective on the side of though. The man who you always want to be playing 2v2 is according to Coco. <laughs> it's Mike Boy now. <laughs> Probably feeling guilty that it's not so on the ball. I like, go on, son, you've earned it. So, perfect first touch, decent second one up against Archie, and a good 50-50 from him towards Jorius. He's trying to push Oxygen more and more back in their half right now, Asa. And the territory game has been positive from them. Mike Boy allows Tho in. Both players playing pretty much 50-50, neither one taking too much control in an attacking sense. And tight rotations as well. So I am liking what I'm seeing from Sir. I thought they'd be a little bit more defensive than this, but definitely taking the fight to auction and serving them well. But Jory is when he gets a chance to double, he can definitely sink those. Just gets his angles wrong again. It was, that was a very tough angle, however. He only had 10 boosts, too, so couldn't do too much from it. Jory is, though, on that chance. Sees it floating tantalizingly in front of that orange net and just manages to slam it below the crossbar. Great challenge from Archie, just bundling through Mike Boy, bullying him out of the way. And Tho had no chance there on his own goal line with Jorias bearing down upon him. And Oxygen, they were two goals up, then it was 2-2. Now they've returned their lead. So showing their own mental game, these 2v2s can get nervy and tight when so much of what happens can be can be put upon you and blamed upon you. And Archie's almost backflipped. I think it was intentional. Mm -hmm. He had far away enough opponents that he could still get that ball. Those coming forward. Oxygen, I'd say, have upped the pace a little bit now. They've gone into another gear in the 2v2 sense. There's Oxygen there with Archie trying to get the flip reset on for double touch. Isn't able to. And Archie with another great challenge on the ball. Turned around nice. by Mike Boy just below nice. the crossbar. He sneaks it. Despite the bump, Sir managed to get the third. Mike Boy just knew exactly what he wanted to do as soon as the ball was there. It was choreographed, it was planned, and still Oxygen Esports fell for it. Not much time left, and this one looks like it's going to be a nail-biter all the way to the bitter end. A final minute is going to be upon us in five seconds. Archie receiving from Jorias goes high with that chance, but a double commit from my boy in Tholis, and now Jorias passes central, does so. Archie shoots, oh. saved away by a back-flipping my boy on the line. Yeah, brilliant stuff from Mike Boy. Just made his car as big as he possibly could. It was a decent shot from Archie. Connected with it well. Maybe connected with it too well. If he'd have fluffed it, might have rolled into the bottom corner. For now, Auction are going to have to keep this pressure going. It's now Sir fully on the defense. Not what we've seen throughout this game, but they do have a chance to counter. Foes to Mike Boy's right. Mike Boy tries to just surprise Oxygen. In the end, it has to be said it was a poor touch. Foe does no such thing. A couple of little touches in front of the Oxygen goal. And Archie can take it away. Jory is to his left. End-to-end -end stuff at the end now. Foes in goal. He's in trouble as well. Oh, Has to avoid nearly. the bump and does brilliantly to do so. Won't score from this attack, but does so much work and gives my boy a chance. 
There's a good few demos coming in now as well. On both sides, a long shot being shut down by Tho on that chance. With 40 boots, he takes this guy. Gets challenged by Archer. Goes to the bomb. Ah. Jorias can save it away with seven boots, though. He can't get too far with this. Flicks it high. Those 1v1 talents not able to score on that one. As Tho now on the right-hand wall. Has, still has 50. Still has chances. Was going for some airdrops earlier. Instead opted for the dunk. But the ball straight to the floor. Overtime in game number two. So I'm feeling more and more comfortable as that game ticks to its conclusion. There was a period of about a minute. Oh, totally on top. Jorius, be careful with that touch. But Sir managed to arrest that decline. Mike Boy wants to tease Foe towards this ball. That's it. Send Archie away, and now Foe can come forwards. Chance for a 1v1 now as Tho challenges versus Jorius. Was it the shout? We're going for the twos. Does seem to be now Archie immediately on the counter attack. The other two players weren't involved in that initial attack. Going to be defending. Tho to shut down that chance. That's going to be one over Jorius, but the second caught by Archie. But my boy, he waits and lurks. Oh. He 50s. And again, the ball rolling tantalizingly over towards that blue line. I have to say, for me, so are the favorites right now. Oxygen going to have to come up with a piece of individual magic you would expect because the team mm. play seems to be going Sars' way. They played together forever, have the two players, as we mentioned. But Jorius can score on any given pitch in Worlds. Rocket League, maybe in his own Ooh. goal, though. Archie bails out his teammate. My goodness, that was a scary moment. Crumbs, that was terrifying. I thought that was going to be the one. I thought that was going to be sneaking into the longest range of own goal that we've seen in professional Rocket League for a very long time. Instead, just over a minute in this overtime, Jory is challenging versus throw in the sky. Archie now heading up with 25 boots. He can't get there before Mike Boy off the backboard. Mike Boy wants to race Jory as to this one. It's a clean hit for Tho, but it's a little bit too simple. And Archie was already waiting. Maybe he could have slowed that ball down. Archie gets a flip Ooh. reset, gets so much angle on it. Jory is coming in. Safe Mike shot. Boy saves it. And Mike Boy's charging down now up against Archie, the only Englishman on a field of Dutch players, I've just noticed. That's fun. It's Archie. Maybe he could be the one who finishes it. No, it's my boy to the Ooh. left. A bit more time taken, and my boy could have got another long shot goal. Ooh. That could have been a second one. Instead, though, I think both players from Oxygen removed from the pitch. That was a yeah. 2v nil for a second there. Tho can't get that pass out, but then towards Archie, the shot from, oh, sorry, the pass from Jory is a little bit too hard. Archie trying to go for these bumps and demos, trying to clear out that final goal line. You get the pass, you get the bump, and that is going to be open for a tap in for your teammate. Mike Boy, slow things down. That's what you need to do. Oxygen just wrangling the momentum here, just like they did in the regular game. They're doing so as well in the overtime. If those gonna get a touch, Mike Boy going for another bump and demo. Been devastating towards Oxygen so far, his aggressive plays. This touch is heavy. Archie has a chance. Mike Boy helps him out. It's a very open game of 2v2 this. Look how much power and pace is going on the ball. Trying to wallop it into each other's ends. Go on sent high as Archie is low on boost. Tries to challenge again off that. Trying to bump foe as well. His attempts on any defender that we're seeing have been pretty scary. I got a good few bumps coming in to try and shut down the counter attacks or even just the defense, trying to make them feel unnervy. My boy with a musty. No bump coming in on Archie on that attempt, however. But the 100 boost and this attack can continue. Yeah, and Tho wins that one cleanly as well. It's happening too much as far as Oxygen are concerned. Sar getting hits with no challenge. With no effect from the players in blue. Right, we're not falling for Jorius' tricks. That one's going to wrap around. Is anyone going to be able to get there from yeah! Oxygen? No, they're not. Surely it's going to roll home. Yes, it does. And in a lobby dominated by the Dutch, the team in orange are the winners. 11 kilometers per hour after Jorius <laughs> flicks over Archie. Archie stays completely still, wants to go for that in and out. Is not going to be happening. That must be one of the slowest goals that we have seen in a tournament setting in Rocket League. One all, and we head straight back into 3v3. It's the crossbar, though, mate, on its way. So surely for you, that is the epitome of a beautiful Rocket League goal. That was my point. Lovely stuff. Well played, sir. I mean, they, even though they went, uh, I think it was two goals behind early on. Yeah, they went two goals mm. behind. Even at that point, to my eye test at least, they seem like the superior twos team. Yeah. Um, I, I, sir, I feel they, they benefited in that match at least, but they scored based off errors from, it seems like, Archie most times, to be fair, where... You didn't have him in good positions. He was pushed up a little bit too far. He got incorrect challenges. This was a complete outplay from Mike Boy. That was okay. beautiful. Picking up, uh, dribbling it over the top. But in the end, falls to Ar Jory is flicking that. Archie could have taken it. Archie needs to call Jory's off there. That could have just been put straight into the opposite corner. And then they can wrap around them for a counter attack. A complete 
communication breakdown, and that is going to lead to a one all as opposed to a two nil for Oxygen. Welcome back, Ixo and Hibbs. A couple of Englishmen join the pitch. I know there's three Dutch players and three Englishmen. What a beautiful split this is for these two teams. Um, and I, I think that Sa are going to be feeling supremely confident after that, in particular Mike Boy, because he was just a menace to Oxygen in the 2v2. Mike Boy was getting into good positions, not only offensively, but defensively too. He, he was trying to remove any player that he could from the pitch at any given moment, but he was also working forward with his teammates to then be in good passing lanes. So Mike Boy being a big old threat, but him oh, threatening hard. Archie, where did you come from? I'm not sure where he was. He was hiding somewhere in the blue goal. Just pops out right when we're about to celebrate. A beautiful finish from, uh, was it Hibbs who had that chance there? Beautiful yeah. play. Yeah, lovely, lovely play stuff. from Hibbs. Yeah, he's been, he's been cracking them out in free play, I reckon. Here he goes again. Wants to get the pass into the center. Archie read it again. So far, Archie is Hibbs' kryptonite. The only man stopping Oxygen being at least one goal behind. Oh, so could make it even better. Archie's there now, and who better to give Oxygen the lead? Great passing across to Eek. So didn't want to go with this initial shot. He sees it two, three defenders are back rather, and then bumps out though from it. The right hand side completely open and Archie snipes home one. It's counter-attacking play again from Oxygen Esports. This is the team, especially with Archie, that I expected to try and squeeze the life out of any opponents, but it seems that they're content, or maybe they're being forced by Saar, who are playing out of their skin right now, to play defensively, to hold out, to get one chance on the counter-attack, and to sink it. And my goodness, Stumpy, they have the mechanics to make the most of those moments, but Saar's mechanics aren't bad either. Hibbs has had a couple of chances, so not been able to score, but... Oxygen have got to be fearful of him. Mike Boy's the one coming in now. Mike Boy, my MVP so far for Saar, gets the equaliser. That's just a beautiful pass in the middle. Eek sets the ball go completely. Mike Boy could have taken it, sorry, Tho could have taken the shot. And so he sees Mike Boy makes the goal wider, turns his car rightward and slams it middle of the net. Who do you reckon is going to win this 3v3? Because it is delicately balanced a couple of minutes mm -hmm. in or a minute and a half in. Um... I'm really vibing with Hibbs and Mike Boy more than anybody that I'm vibing with on Oxygen. So I'm feeling like Sarah going to take this, but then we've got a 1v1 on the way as well. So theoretically, Jory is wins that, but I don't know. I mean, I, I just met the 3v3, and I agree with you. I think Sarah are looking favorites to me, despite, again, going behind. But mechanics, Oxygen's bread and butter. Jorius takes a great touch. He's up now against Hibbs, who sends it to the side. And Mike Boy chases more good play from Saar. Whenever Oxygen are coming forward, Saar aren't panicking. They're dealing with their attack very simply. And they are sitting deep when they have to, but so far it's been the right decision until That's one beautiful. mistake happens. It was a lovely pass, but could Saar have done better? I know, but that's an outstanding pass. Ixa goes high with it, completely lost Mike Boy, chips in, then Jory is back behind Hibbs. His car matrixing around the ball. Actually quite unlucky to not get a touch there as well. And you got to see the, uh, the, the gold boost through the smoke. It looked beautiful there, the alpha boost. Anyway, his Hibbs in the corner. Up against Jory is over the top. Still time for Sutter to come back into this one, but Auction have played their game plan to a T. They're sticking to it. Counter-attacking does seem like their play style. Jorius to send that ball long. Hibbs into the corner to save it. That's going to bounce awkwardly. And with Thor reckoning he needs to get a touch, it's going to be burning a bit more of his boost away. Left hand walls. He's Archie shy away from that chance and then goes high with it, but just gives the ball away, to be honest. Oxygen starting to look a little bit more scared with these chances. Here is Hibbs to that far wall. Into the center by Archie. A huge strike which though deals with in a neat and tidy way. Now Jory is just in the center with Archie and Mike Boy. Archie's still trying to come in. He's been involved, Archie, pretty much in everything that Oxygen are doing on both sides right now. But it's Ixo, the new boy, that gets a great 50-50. Jory is there, wants to beat Hibbs, can't quite do it. So still not being outpaced by Oxygen. And the solo plays aren't really working for them either. It's these team plays. Can they get the pass into the center that Saar aren't expecting? If they do, that's when Saar look vulnerable. Very quickly, Carl, I'd like for you to guess for me what the series score is between German Amigos and BDS. I think it is... The one all. German Amigos just 3 0 BDS. <laughs> oh, really? Yep, that happened over on the B stream. Make sure you're following over there too, because Johnny and Jorby just went through that entire match, and they got a whole load of desk a bit later on too, so make sure that you keep your eyes over there. But that series now wrapped up. We continue over with Oxygen and Sir. This is very much cold. I want all though, so you got that right. BDS back? No, oh, no, because they just lost 3 0.
BDS back, confirmed. Wow. It's the <laughs> it's just going up against Ezo. Massive demo. And that's going to let Sut in. This series is still so close. It's one all here. Massive 3v3. We are seeing Sir, you would expect, pretty much have to win it, as you mentioned earlier on Stumpy. The 1v1 with Jorias should be a game pretty much locked in for Oxygen. So this could be close enough to the series if Sir can't battle their way back in. 30 seconds remain, and Oxygen just have this quite tentative one goal lead. A great chance for Mike Boyd to send it below the crossbar. Instead, it's saved by Ixo to then continue it onto the right hand wing. Mike Boyd challenging again in the corner. Archie does not manage to beat out Mike Boyd in the sky. And now Hibbs to catch. Hibbs has looked great whenever he's been in the sky. But Jory is on that chance just that bit better. Archie into that back corner. The final 10 seconds ticks down. And will Oxygen be taking it into the 2 1? Time to build up one more attack for Sir. But can they get the ball first? Oxygen right now playing keep ball and demoing as well, making it as difficult as possible for Sir to get a sniff. And then Mike Boy and Tho. Oh, we talked about how long they've been playing together, but they get in each other's way. That ends the game. Oxygen on the cusp. Oxygen now going into their favoured 1v1 versus Sir. And I don't know who would even be taking this, um, to be honest. I don't know really how much experience in 1v1 Hibs has. My boy and uh, Tho, we said they had like a little bit of 1v1 experience, but very much nobody specialising. Jory is making a name for himself specialising. So this is going to be an uphill battle for Sir to come back. And I still think they look like the better team, to be honest, in that series. Oh, sorry, in that game. They still look like the better team um, in the threes. Which could now, maybe we can say at this point, is by design from Oxygen. You know, in all, in all the games, Sar have looked a little bit faster, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more optimistic in, the, in their play. And yet Oxygen are the ones who are getting these wins. So maybe that is the actual play style that Oxygen want to do. They want to give their opponents time and space on the ball and then punish them when they overcommit. So maybe mm. our eyes are being lied to, Stumpy, and this is exactly what Oxygen wants. But I'll tell you what Saar do not want, and that is a 1v1 against Jorius. But sadly for them, it's going to have to happen. That is very much literally the format of this competition, uh, which is a shame for Sir. Tho is going to be stepping up to the plate. And Jorias, he's looked good today. He's had some good shots. He's also missed a couple of shots. So this is Jorias with very much being a favoured man. However, not... Uh, down and out is foe. It's going to be, bear in mind how close Lassa was earlier against Zen. These competitions can change things. It's a decent kickoff there from Foe, which is what he needs to focus on. You know, if he, if he gets those and he's got every chance, but he's going to have to, you feel, crack in a couple of early goals to really give himself some confidence. And Jorius is already showing dominance, just playing with his food somewhat in the first 16 seconds. It's good movement from Jorius too. Shoots on target, forces Tho to go for that save. And Tho getting the save leaves it straight back towards the midfield where Jorius waits in the six yard box and can then tap it in. And we'll see, I think, a few moves like that where Jorius has got that bit more experience, knows what he wants to be going for, knows the plays that he personally thinks he can score a lot more of and will be able to get them out a lot more frequently. But Tho to the sky doesn't go for the reset, instead just goes for the straight shot. Jorius reads it. Yeah, it could have been an edgeable bump as well. Had lots of options there, did though, and it was all from the fake kickoff, which got him the boost and the ball in his own corner. So, it worked pretty much to a T, just then couldn't quite convert the mechanical chance that he got for himself. And he's going to turn back on this one, but it's Jorius who has a couple of touches. Plenty of boost in the tank to play with as well. Tho's going to try and get this one around the corner. Up against Jorius, does he have the flick? Instead, oh. he fakes it, but Jorius, he knew exactly what he was trying, and he read it. First minute, just the one goal. Jorius, though, with a reset. Actually sends it too wide, and very fortunately for him, bumps Tho out of the way. Otherwise, that would have been a pretty decent counter-attack opportunity. Tho now, chance to push versus Jorius. Gets the bump, gets the boost, and then the ball possession still falls to him, but scaredly sends it high instead. Jorius is staying so grounded as well, letting Tho waste his boost and put himself in a slightly more awkward position. But Jorius does lose possession there. Those, those, to his credit, he's trying some stuff. Do you know what I mean? He's trying mm. fakes, trying jukes, trying bumps, and Jorius isn't quite falling for it yet, but Tho's not being predictable. All it takes is for one of these to land, and Tho is going to get himself a goal. I feel like Tho's just poking. Yeah. He, he, he's seeing what uh, Jorius wants to do, and is then just sort of saying, OK, but I'm going to make you a little bit uncomfortable. Jorius does have the reset there, didn't manage to use it in time, maybe he didn't actually get it. But zero boost, he has to return. And the ball pressure going back towards him. A quick turn round with 100 boost. He's more than able to flick that one in. The open net will be his. 
Jarius was desperate for Foe to attack the ball right there. And he did, and Jarius thinks, ah, that's going to be the easiest goal I'm going to get myself today. Finished it with a bit of a flourish, that fancy flick into the bottom right corner. Got to love it. Uh, but all the damage was done earlier on on that side wall. And Tho, to his credit, you know, again, he was trying to mix up his speed. He'd been slightly passive with some 50-50s. That one he tried to dive straight into. Unfortunately, on that occasion, it was the wrong decision. Approaching halftime in this game, and yet again, in the Game of that Borders competition, it is going to be low scoring. Sir and Tho, however, are going to be contributing 1-2 that scoreline. Completely committed had Tho. This one had to go in. Ojorias was pretty much guaranteed to go 3-0 up. Ojorias actually tried to recover off that side wall within the goal. Not quite able to do it. The ball just disintegrated in front of his very eyes and made it 2-1. So again, well done to Tho. Staying alive, making Ojorias think at the very least. But this could be 3-1 if Ojorias yep. gets the double tap. He does. And it's as simple as you like for the Dutchman is immediately from the kickoff too. He can get that side boost. Tho literally has to go for that corner. But like maybe he can pick up a couple of pennies, but he'd already turned towards it. He gets the pennies, he's in there. Jory maybe gets that 50. It, it was a bit of a losing situation for him. Just an outplayed kickoff TBH. Speaking of outplayed kickoffs, that fake from Tho has worked again. Jory has handed over possession twice. Last time Tho wasn't quite able to get the outplay after the initial act. This time again, that's the case. Jorius just swallows that up, spits it out, and it's 4-1 to Oxygen. Jorius with a spit and swallow means that with two minutes 20, these three goals are going to be hard for Tho to be trying to come back against. I don't know how much chance he's really going to have either because Jorius on defense still looks brilliant. Nice. Brilliant at pretty much everything in 1v1 as Jory is. You know, he's a player that you don't want to chase against because he's an intelligent 1v1 player as well. That's what he wants though to do. Nice, nice. But Tho's managed to evade his bumps there and makes it 4-2. Jory's also just getting that awkward touch round. And mm. although that was passed back into the corner, the corner is very hard to score from. Credit to Tho for wrapping it back round again and using the full momentum of the ball to then get it goalward. A couple more goals is needed from Sar. But Jorius could make that three again, and he should from kickoff. Tho has to make sure that he doesn't get frustrated by that, because it, it, it sucks when you get back into a game and then you lose a goal on kickoff. It is frustrating. I, I don't care how many 1v1s you've played. That's a frustrating thing to happen. Tho has to make sure he doesn't let it affect him. And Tho, to be honest, has done a good job in making sure that a lot of these chances, Jorius has had to work for at least a little bit. Yeah, he's let, I think, two go off those kickoffs, but he's still having to be outplayed on those kickoffs for them to happen. A good chance from Tho here, but with only eight boosts, he can't speed the ball up nearly as much as he would like to. And Jorius, I think, had a sense that Tho was pretty low on boost there as well, so it looked like a scary moment, but Jorius will tell us all that he had it completely covered. This may be not, though. Tho gets an early flip over the, to the ball, wants to get the 50-50 at the end quite able to there so Jorius is his turn this time is it a flip preset it is in the end wants to get it in the far corner and he nails it and it's 6-3 Jory is on these pushes down the other side I feel like he's always got a plan B he gets the flip reset there in that opportunity he can go low he can fake it you know he can then go for the pop over the top or he can keep it low or he can use the reset exactly how he did he can send it to the backboard then get a double there are so many avenues that has to try and cover that Jorius has already thought of and has already got contingency plans for and it makes it that much harder to play against him. He's not just a one-track mind and that is why he's one of the best minds in Rocket League 1v1s that we've ever seen. A long shot from Jorius. If that bounced from the post, he was going to freestyle it straight back in. I believe that's what the fighting game community call a frame trap where whatever uh, foe does, Jorius will do the opposite. And that means he's guaranteed to get a go. I, I think I might be a hashtag gamer. You're a bit of a gamer. I, I think I... What do you play? Uh, Amstrad, is that still cool? <laughs> About six people will know what an Amstrad is in chat. All right, well, shout out to the six. Shout out to my Amstrad <laughs> six. Is that going to go all the way in? It's, it's not, but Jorius is going to chase it down. Uh, it's 7-2, it's Jorius is, is, is pulling away. This, this is expected, and this will be series over as well. Unless there's a huge upset in the last minute or so, which I can't see. Jorius is starting to freestyle. <laughs> oh, please get this, sink this. Oh, that's so good. Wow, fully freestyle, 8-2.
complete brilliance from Joris uses the reset that he gets from the ceiling, stops it dead in his tracks from foes clear, and then ground pinches it in as he lands. The sixth goal difference is beautiful, and Joris is the gem in Oxygen's crown. How do you even face that when you are Tho? You're thinking you're going to come away with uh, a counter-attack. You can, you can launch a volley. You know I mean, you can go for an edgeable. And then suddenly Jorius is not only there, he has his flip. He can flip yeah. back towards your goal and then gets the floor pinch. That's shocking. 48 seconds and five to bring back for the fourth foe. And Jory is faking out that shot. I feel like he's going to go for a couple of freestyling shots here. He's going to pick up this back corner boost. So may as well just let him take his time. But from the backboard, Jory is goes up high, tries to get this reset on this attempt. No, he goes to the pogo instead. It just falls awkwardly. And then as if we are doing a freestyle competition, yeah. <laughs> gives the ball back to Tho, then moves back to his own half. Oh, this is brilliant. Little like bonus that. freestyle. Jory saves it there. Okay, Jory has turned this time. He gets the good catch. The ball's on his... Wheels, Ooh. gets the flip reset, goes for the second flip reset, not quite there. Is he going to get the reverse? Oh! He got the reverse wave dash to then stop his momentum and then send him back a little bit. Look at when he lands. He sends himself back straight into the boost and then just sends it straight back on again. That is just lovely little bits of movement. X has already left the match, good on him. <laughs> it is a six like goals left to come in for Tho. It's not happening. Jory is, is my MVP of this match so far. I mean, it was a lovely little bit of movement, but I think that Tho was under the impression that they were taking turns freestyling, so be in there from Jorias. And he makes it 10 as well. Oh, with a second left, Jorias just... <laughs> he could have had a slow shot. We want 11. We want 11. No, we don't want 11. Just just, do. just let the ball hit the floor. Jorias, be the bigger man. Fun fact, the game doesn't end till the ball hits the floor. Is that's it not? One you, that's one for your new viewers out there. Thank you. Go on, John. Go on, the 11th. No. <laughs> it's like, go on, lads. Do the right thing. And you're like, get, a, get an 11th. Go on. That'll be a game changer. Oh, Jory is win. With a brilliant, brilliant 1v1 performance at the end. I wasn't convinced with him a couple of times during the 3v3s. And yet, he comes out clutch when it is his favoured game mode. Oxygen, as well, are going to make their way through the brackets. And they will be facing German Amigos. Mm. Who, as you mentioned earlier, 3 0 Team BDS in... An intriguing start to the rise era of Team BDS, but a huge win for Oxygen there. They'll be pretty comfortable. They go within one series win of making it to Gamers 8. One more series win. That's so exciting. So in the upper bracket semi-finals, we've got Oxygen, German Amigos, Vitality, and G1. Two of them will be going to Saudi Arabia to be playing in the Gamers 8 LAN. That is wonderful. I mean, it might be all of them. They could be the four. Oh, crumbs, it could be, couldn't it? Actually, I don't know if that's how it works. They might meet each other in the lower bracket, uh, so I don't know if that's actually mathematically true that they could be the four. I presume... It can be, yeah, yeah, other. because the losers then go through to the lower bracket quarterfinals, right? Oh, and then places. and then on the opposite sides, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, could be a four right there. Um, Gosh. Yeah, Oxygen, comfortable winners in the end, but I don't know if I like their threes playstyle so far. They did not, to me, if I'm being critical, they did not, to me, seem like a team where I go, wow, they're a contender, based on the yeah. small amount of data we've seen. I completely agree. Yeah, no, I think that they were... They did a good job in the 3v3. They have clearly got room to grow into. I think that if we say that was exactly what we want to see, that's disingenuous to them. We know that they can give us more. We know that they are a better team than that. However, they got the job done. German Amigos are going to be, I think, a quite a big step up. They are going to be a harder opponent, and that is going to be a tough one for them to face. Well, speaking of better teams, let's go to the analyst team with Barney Banks. I agree with what St Stumpy's look of horror just then. Better team? Cole, we're all a team. What are you talking about? Thank you so much for taking us through that match. Oxygen Esports coasting into the upper bracket semi-final. Two matches into our $1.25 million tournament here and all that money going to a good cause. My favorite moment of that entire series, by the way, guys, had to be when high stakes moment and Stumpy exclaimed in horror, crumbs. That's just so British, isn't it? I gotta love him, come on. Lemon. Uh, Lemon Kiwi, Gamers Without Borders, a plethora of underdog stories as always. Is there potential here in Dazarin's favorite region, EU? 
Yeah, I mean, so uh, they had me in the first half. I'm not going to lie. I mean, they only lost by one goal in game one. They stretched it to a three minute overtime in game two. It was close, close, close up until you had the 1v1. And then it was a smacking by Jorius. So you got to say, so put a really good fight. They'll be dropping down to face BDS, uh, which is not a team I was expecting them to face. I was kind of setting up this oxygen versus their their former third of BDS in the semifinal. But that's not going to happen. <laughs> I was as well. I was thinking, oh, BDS, previous world champions. Oh, there's a story there. And here they are in the lower bracket. But hey, a lower bracket run is still on the cards. Spaceman, how are you feeling, buddy? Scale of one to ten. You cooking? I'm feeling like a nine. I mean, I'm just happy that there's good Rock League on our screens. I, I've got no dog in this fight, but I'm enjoying it nonetheless. I, I really like what Ixo brings to the table. I like the pace change. Oxygen look good. BDS woes continue. This is, this is Rock League, man. It's Rocket League indeed. You've got the highlights on your screen presented by Aramco. Something we haven't touched on a huge amount over the past few days, map control. And I've got to say that that twos match, okay? Tho from Sir was just right place, right time, all the time. And that final goal really was a hold your breath moment, Lemon. I thought it was impressive. Yeah, I think uh, both Sun Oxygen, despite incorporating new thirds, it, they start. They came out the gates hot, and that, I think that's why we had such a good series. The three-one scoreline doesn't tell you enough. Of we thought there was going to be a larger space, a larger gap between Oxygen and Sun. Like I just said, like keeping it within a one-goal game. The fact that Sun were found ways to improve and stay in Oxygen's shadow. You went to ones where Jorius just outclasses, though, in that regard. But I still was very entertained. I'm looking forward to see if if Sa can also catch BDS on their off day. Yes, Jorio is extremely impressive up to this point. Spaceman, do you have anyone else who's impressed and maybe who frankly needs to do more out of these two teams? I mean, I'm, I'm happy with Ixo's placement so far. I think, again, transitional periods are tough, especially when you're going into a crew format, but maybe there's less pressure on Ixo to have to step up immediately because you have some leniency with Jorius relying on those ones like we saw in this uh, in this best of five so far. I like what Ixo's bringing to the table. Um, I mean, look, we didn't see him on stream. They were on B stream, but if BDS is already struggling, I'm not putting on Rise at all, but I am looking at BDS and saying, all right, you make one of the biggest roster moves in the off season. This is your chance to show it was the right move. Clearly for me, that's where my attention's drawn. Are BDS going to flounder again, or are they going to start making a run? I It's yet to be seen, but I don't know what's going on. Well, if they're going to make a run, they've got to do it right here, right now, don't they? Lemon Kiwi, we've got a very spicy graphic for you that we haven't actually seen up to this point. We've got the MVP of the match. It's going to be on your screen very, very shortly, and that MVP is... I want, like, a little mini drum roll from Spaceman, and Lemon Kiwi is Jorius, of course. Yeah, the... <laughs> Like, he's a flex player. I wouldn't say, like, he was the star in the threes or the twos. It's just, this is the MVP because you put him in ones, you put him in twos, and he performs on all those stages. But you got to give it to him for that once. Like, the 10 goals is disgusting. He was styling on them. Of course, it was hard to pick an MVP because I think everyone, Space and I agree that everyone on Oxygen performed fairly equal. There wasn't that standout, but Jorius for the 1v1 clutch just to get Oxygen out of that series. Showing up in a live competition as well with this much on the line. It's got to feel good. It's got to boost that confidence going into their second match into the upper bracket. But let's have a quick look at the bracket. Speaking of it, we've got an update for you so that you can see what the matches are looking like as we progress throughout this EU region. Oxygen Esports will be facing off against German Amigos and Team Vitality will go up against G1. That'll be a little bit later on today. And also, I think we have the lower bracket that we're going to switch to very shortly as well. Well, this lower bracket is looking like this. So are going to face off against Team BDS. If BDS are going to do it, we've already said they got to do it now. Otherwise, they are out of this competition and they don't qualify for Gamers 8. That is mm -hmm. scary. Fufa Dop. Uh, Fufa X Dop. Fufax Dop. I keep Fufax getting it wrong. Dop. I keep like, you know what I mean? My brain is hey, not villain. working up here. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So wait, can we just like abbreviate? How can I just abbreviate this space, man? Facts. Uh, uh, foo. Foo. Or facts. Or top. top. What? Like, it's, it's three <laughs> syllables. Like, it's great. You can pick your poison here. Uh, I don't know why players insist on these wild names, but uh, it's fun. What does it it's mean? Fun <laughs> I know Nobody, it's... They don't even know. They just... <laughs> <laughs> I know it's three syllables, and it's not like I talk for a living or anything, so uh, it shouldn't be difficult for me. Anyway, we're going to dive into a very, very short break. Go to the bathroom. Be back here sharpish, because things happen quickly in Rocket League. See you after this.